Ani Bojo, Wabano Nimki Quen Dijnikaz, Ganabajing Nimki Ajibakang Donjaba, Makwado Dem, Nishna Be Quen Dao. Um, <coughs> my name is Candace Day Nevu. I come from um, North Shore, Lake Superior, and Lake Huron. Um, I don't really say I'm from one First Nation because our people were nomadic before the Indian Act and we would migrate uh, up and down to where the abundance was uh, in season. So we're here today speaking about um, nuclear waste and nuclear energy. Um, very important topic because um, what we do now is gonna affect our future. And as like a, a young mother, I want to um, speak for children, for all of our children, you know, my my young ones, uh, and say that like we have to do better. Um, you know, learning more about nuclear energy and how dangerous it is. I just want to highlight how um, you know it doesn't make sense that we continue to use nuclear energy and make more nuclear energy when we don't even know what to do with the waste now. It's just irresponsible. And, um, you know, as as the Anishinaabe Kwe, um, it's my responsibility to speak up for the water, you know, because that's who we are. Um, it, you know, part of our identity is that spirituality, our, People are very spiritual people, and um, a lot of times it's misunderstood. Um, and a lot of times with the Canadian government, like it's it's been a very abusive relationship. As a young woman, I know what an abusive relationship is, and I've survived abusive relationships. But this uh, a relationship with the government is very um, ongoing abuse to Indigenous people. Um, you know, um, so I just wanted to highlight like how Trudeau is uh, threatening indigenous people with the rule of law, you know, threatening um, <clears throat> military forces against our people. Like what about reconciliation? That goes on the back burner when it comes to us um, putting our bodies on the line to protect Mother Earth because that's what we do is we put our bodies on the line because we are Mother Earth. We're, our, we're all a part of creation, you know? So <clears throat> it just seems like our worldview is always put to the side um, when it comes to land defense. You know, our people, um, we're, we're leaders in, in um, you know, the resistance because Mother Earth gives us so much nourishment in our teachings. Um, it's important to have a strong relationship with Mother Earth, you know, so that's why we're, we're so sensitive and, and we feel the, that, that, that pain when Mother Earth is um, being exploited and treated as a resource, you know, because she's not, you know, so when they want to put this nuclear waste inside the ground, it's like putting nuclear waste inside my womb because it's going inside, you know, um, where it shouldn't be going. The uranium should have never been touched. We had simple, we had simple instructions as Anishinaabek people. We had natural law and um, we tried to say no and teach why, you know, um, our natural law was um, given to us. But it's always so misunderstood and undervalued. You know, we, we were just told that like uh, uranium was serpent medicine and you're never supposed to touch it because human beings wouldn't know what to do with it. So now with this waste and how dangerous it is, it, it, just, it just goes to show how simple our instructions were, you know, and we want to, we want to um, enforce our natural law because 
that's that was our agreements you know our relationship is with the crown and um you know with treaties so i just wanted to um acknowledge the fact that you know we're we're dealing with a lot of white supremacy in canada and it's um very abusive and um we do not consent we do not consent for this nuclear energy. I went and spoke at the Chalk River facilities 10-year uh, license, and I had said that there was no indigenous representation on the panel of um, you know, judges, zero representation. And, uh, and um, you know, through their treaties they made with us, you know, uh, they're legally obligated to legitimize worldview, but there was nothing there because we were never an ally. We we're always an obstacle treated as an Indian problem, you know. So I just wanted to be here in opposition to nuclear energy and speak for this uh, generation, future generations, so that they have um, f fresh drinking water and a chance, you know. So with that, I want to say miigwech and, um, you know, um, that we say no. Keep it in the ground. Miigwech. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? I'm uh, Teguido, Grand Chief of the Mohawk Council of Ganawage. Um, it is my duty and responsibility to be here today, not necessarily a pleasure, because of the fact that back home in Canada, there are many things that are happening at, at the moment that are um, being um, avoided by the by the government of Canada as well as the public in general and maybe it's true in the government itself avoiding I use that term because turning a blind eye to a lot of things that are happening at, at this at this very moment as we speak and as we speak here today in uh, in in the capital of Canada in Ottawa Ontario there were rallies uh, in opposition of uh, nuclear waste and nuclear energy in general. It is, um, it is our duty, as the previous speaker um, explained, and especially coming from a young mother, to talk about the future of our, of our existence in our homelands. Canada, North America, we consider to be our homelands. We consider uh, North America, we call North America Turtle Island. And this is where we all exist. And this is where we invited the Europeans to come and settle. Not invited, but welcomed the Europeans to come and settle, to share in the bounty and the wealth of our territory. And in doing so, left ourselves vulnerable to the overwhelming numbers and the power and the strength that they brought with them. And over the course of time, we began to become very minim minimal in terms of our exercise of authority and responsibility over our, over our territories. But now it's time for us to begin to talk about and to exercise that duty that we have to protect our Mother Earth. It's very important. And we, and we emphasize this not only amongst ourselves as Ogwehuwe people or indigenous peoples, but it's to our brothers and sisters, the younger brothers and sisters who have come here, because they are younger than us in terms of the length of time that we have spent, that we have been here. And for us, it's a question of, uh, from the beginning, originally re-educating and making sure that all peoples are aware of what the destructive, the destruction that we face 
if we are not able to convince Canada as well as other powers that be, even globally, about the dangers of nuclear waste. I mean, everybody talks about it, but does anybody do anything about it? We may not be in a position in terms of numbers to be able to prevent things such as that from, from happening, but certainly we can come to forums such as this and in our own backyard to continue to, to pursue Canada, continue to, to make the government of Canada understand that not only are they, they destroying the territories of the, of the Ogwehuwe, but they're destroying their, themselves, their own citizens. Um, we are allies to Canada, and we continue to advise Canada of that situation. And, but there's a strong emphasis for us to continue to remind Canada about the existing relationship that we have. We are the elder brothers and sisters of the continent. And it's our duty to continue to do that. While Canada runs and hides and hands over all its authority to organizations, we would like more, if possible, to convince the powers that be in other countries to also to step forward and find ways and means of, um, of, of, um, of being able to deal with nuclear waste. The, ama the abandonment of, of radioactive waste materials is damaging to all living species and human beings. We, want, we would like to see monitored and retrievable storage. We would like to see better containment, more packaging. We would like <clears throat> to store, if it needs to be stored, if it has to be stored, do it away from water bodies. Because right now, the proposal is to put it in very, very, uh, in very vulnerable areas, even within the populations. No imports or exports because this, this material is to be transported and has been transported right across North America and makes it, very, makes it very vulnerable to terrorist attacks and to all kinds of things that can happen. So we remind Canada, we remind the world of this situation and we would, we would like to see people step forward and begin to behave in a way that respects all nature all aspects of Mother Earth. We'd all said there's no cost. On that common accounting, my little minister sing don't you bah? Because they adore them. After all, with Don Aguin Adsma, this nuclear industry is in car there. With Don Agopadis. I want to just say, uh, uh, I'm Grand Council Chief Patrick Madawi from the Anishinaabek Nation. I represent 40 First Nations in an area from Thunder Bay, north of Armstrong, all the way over to the Ottawa Valley, Peterborough, the Corthus, down towards Sarnia, and all around the Great Lakes. 40, for, there are some 46 First Nations immediately around the Great Lakes area. You know, uh, we're here today as an alliance of Anishinaabe and Iroquois, but there are other First Nations in Ontario that are also... Uh, going to be uh, challenged with the issue of storing of nuclear waste. They're talking about storing this in deep underground repositories. If you talk to anyone in the mining industry, they'll talk about the fact that there's always constant seismic activity going on underground. Plus the pressure of just water and mother nature is, is unbelievable. You know, you can see or they built highways and you'll see water coming out of the face of a rock face on a wall. That shows you how powerful water is. And I don't, well, don't think there's anything that man can build, you know, uh, that could counter seismic activity or the pressures of underground, uh, pressures of water and, and, and uh, liquids that are under there. So the idea of putting this stuff underground is total insanity. It's, it's stupidity. They're talking about doing it in uh, areas around the uh, Concarden area, and they're talking about taking it up into, uh, into First Nations territories where they're, uh, because these are economically depressed areas. And uh, the nuclear waste industry, uh, nuclear waste management organization, is throwing around money into these economically depressed areas to try to get them to uh, agree to having uh, this stored in their territories. When they should be doing is stopping to produce the stuff in the first place, and then look for the science, store it where it is now, 
and store it in the, uh, until they build a science to look after this because this stuff lasts for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. Why would anyone take the chance to uh, move this stuff around? Because that's the other issue. They're, they're transporting this stuff through First Nations territories and through non-Indigenous territories, highly populated areas in some cases, and all they need is a serious accident that could devastate millions of people or the land and the drinking water. We, we had an incident actually on January 5th near Wawa, Ontario, where a tractor trailer, uh, a logging truck jackknifed on uh, icy roads, and of all the rotten timing, a uh, low-grade uranium uh, tanker come down the hill and crashed into that uh, logging truck. They called in the spill unit. The spill unit is probably 10 to 12 hours away, maybe 14 hours away, if they're even lucky to get it there. And of course, uh, the area is cordoned off, and you will never know what went into the water. You know, and all of this, uh, especially the, uh, uh, the nuclear industry and the international uh, folks and, and the national folks that are trying to uh, keep this industry alive, you know, they don't understand you can't drink this stuff. That's what it's all about, the mighty dollar. And if you ever contaminate the water, you know, you can only last so long without water. You know, um, there are other answers here. You know, the green energy sector, you know, can produce it. We already have an abundance of power in Ontario, where I come from, where they're selling off excess power to the United States. You can buy Quebec power for almost a third of the cost of what is being produced in Ontario by buying power from Quebec. So there's no reason anymore uh, you know, to be uh, producing uh, more, more nuclear waste. These, un these refurbishing nuclear plants that they're costing billions of dollars to refurbish are, are no longer necessary. You know, time will tell as the modern society is converting to other forms of, uh, of energy. As you see, as an example, as my friend uh, Grand Chief Norton was talking to me earlier about the way even the electric car is coming about very quickly. Well, very soon you won't need, you know, this nuclear energy when there's all other options for energy, energy usage. You know, we have a declaration called the United, Rights, United Nations uh, uh, Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People. It talks about how we must be cons consent and uh, accommodated before uh, they bring this uh, into our territories, doing damage to Mother Earth. And they are not doing that. As I said, they have gone to a few people uh, who, don't, who are not the rights holders of the, of the land that this stuff is going to be stored in, or they're putting it beside water bodies. You know, the, the lunacy of putting a giant, you know, six-story mound of uh, nuclear waste beside the Ottawa River, near Chalk River, uh, you know, how, how do people even attempt to even justify that? Obviously, the industry will tell you this stuff is safe, that they haven't had an accident. Who is willing out there to be the first ones to have this happen in your backyard? Who's the first ones out there that's willing to have this happen to your drinking water? And who is the first ones out there willing to put their lives up, you know, if an accident happens in their territory? Not us. Not, uh, not the Anishinaabek, not the Iroquois. You know, and we're saying that this lunacy has to stop. So, uh, miigwech, thank you for listening to me. Um, hello, my name is uh, Gordon Edwards. I am a professor of science and mathematics and um, I am also the president of the Canadian Coalition for Nuclear Responsibility. It's my great honor to be here as a scientific advisor and technical assistance to the First Nations people who really have values that we sadly lack in our industrialized society. The problem is that we think of nuclear power as a source of electricity generation, that it produces electricity, but that's only for a very brief time, a few decades. What it's really producing is toxic radioactive waste that will last for eternity. And uh, the, unfortunately, whereas uh, a lot of attention is paid to the production of electricity, very little attention, not insufficient attention, is paid to the protection of the environment and the people in the land and the future generations who are going to inherit this waste. Uh, we cannot, radioactivity is a form of nuclear energy that cannot be shut off and consequently, it remains uh, dangerous for hundreds of thousands, even millions of years. And while the industry pretends to say that they have a way of disposing of this waste, disposal is not even a scientific term. Disposal has no scientific meaning. If you look at even the nuclear industry's definition, 
It's that they have no intention of looking after it beyond a certain point. That's abandonment, not disposal. And what we're facing, and we're going to be facing this around the world, what the problems we're experiencing in Canada are going to be cropping up in every continent in many countries, radioactive waste of all kinds, which the industry and even the governments want to abandon rather than look after them. Uh, the difference between abandonment is abandonment leads to amnesia, and so that future generations will not even know when this stuff begins to leak what they're dealing with. They will not know how to take protective measures. They will not know how to repackage the waste and so on. We need instead a responsible approach. The governments have got to start paying attention. What's happening around the world is the government is abdicating responsibility to the industry that produces the waste and saying, it's your problem, you solve it. Well, it's true it's their problem, they created it, but it's our problem and our grandchildren's problem and it's our government's problem to pay attention and to consult the people and to consult in particular the indigenous people who know the land better than anybody and who have survived for thousands of years in these land formations and they know what thousands of years means. We don't. So I, I think that we really must insist that governments wake up, start paying attention, start consulting uh, extensively with indigenous people and with uh, other Canadians and other people around the world and not put the industry in charge of looking after it. The industry has a double motive. They have a conflict of interest. Anytime you give them, and we have given them, billions of dollars, billions of dollars to deal with this radioactive waste, they pocket the money and don't solve the problem. And instead, they use that money to try and expand the nuclear industry to produce even more waste, to produce even more nuclear power, because that is their bottom line. So we're calling here, we would hope that the United Nations Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues would write a letter to the Canadian government, to Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, asking Prime Minister Trudeau to explain how the Canadian government is achieving its responsibilities with regard to First Nations in connection with radioactive waste and how they are uh, planning to consult with First Nations and with others for not abandoning the waste but for establishing a policy of rolling stewardship based on the best practices we have and using principles such as the has been espoused by the Five Nations Joint Declaration which are really important fundamental principles away from the water. Don't put it beside the water. That's stupid. Poisoning the water is poisoning life itself. Uh, secondly, not abandoning it, but, but perpetual guardianship, intergenerational. Thirdly, uh, we should package it in, in modules which are digestible. What I mean by that is the module should be labeled for future generations. They should know what's in it. If it starts leaking, they can correct it. They can protect it. Instead, what we have at Chalk River, Ontario, they want to create a mound five stories high of radioactive waste on the surface, just within less than a kilometer of the Ottawa River. When that mound starts falling apart, who is going to be able to retrieve that material and look after it properly? So it's not packaged in a way which future generations can deal with. I'll leave it there, but I, I wish uh, that uh, to inform people that the First Nations really have the principles that we need to guide us. Thank you. Oh. Segal. My name is Chief A. Pradams Phillips. I'm from the Akwazasana First Nation. I'm here to speak on radioactive waste and the responsibility. My, in my heart, this responsibility is coming from my children and to the next generation of children and to our future. I'm getting choked up because it is a huge responsibility, not for myself, but for everybody. We celebrated Earth Day yesterday. We celebrate once a year, but to me every day is Earth Day. Our people practice, we don't practice. We have a natural way. We give back thanks to our Mother Earth every day. And there's a responsibility there, a partnership. 
but we don't, we, what we don't realize is that the partnership is soon to end. She's going to get tired of us and her treatment. We wouldn't treat others the way we treat her, but yet we do. We think we need her, and she needs us. But in reality, she's going to rid of us soon. She's going to shake us. What scares me is we are all spiritual people, and yet we, we tend to ignore that fact. What's going to happen? And they showed me. I've been given a special gift, and I am a dreamer. And what she showed me is not nice. 70, 80 years tops. That's what they said. That's all she's going to hold us for. She's going to start shaking. She's going to start crumbling. And she's not going to be forgiven. What are we going to do then? How are we going to survive? The amount of money the amount of things we need will no longer be of use to us. It'll be about survival. And it's about responsibility that we need to change today. We need to open our eyes. We need to be kind. We need to be gentle. My heart's pounding right now. Imagine in 70 years what yours What's going to happen with your family, the next generation? What are they going to do? It's no longer going to be about lower class or higher class. I leave you with those words, with a strong message. Please take them into consideration. To. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anybody have any uh, comments or questions out there? Uh, for the sake of those people in attendance, there are some handouts uh, which contains the joint declaration of the Anishinaabeg Nation and the Iroquois Caucus. Um, and there's also a, for, uh, a little handout on the concept of rolling stewardship as opposed to abandonment. And there's also a map of, a nuclear map of Canada which uh, uh, has uh, explanatory notes on the back. So please help yourself to those and take several copies if you have friends that you think would like them. I just want to uh, also share, uh, you know, something I heard from an elder. The Nuclear Waste Management Organization, has, uh, as I said, is spreading a lot of money around. And they say they have an uh, indigenous consultation with some folks and they're, they're picking people uh, to do their dirty work for them. An elder said to me, he was at a meeting, he says, I'm... I'm rushing off to Winnipeg. He says, uh, these nuclear waste industry people are so great, they're giving me $1,000 a day to say the opening prayer plus expenses. Uh, you know, uh, th th this is, uh, these are not the people that represent our communities. And uh, they need to talk to the, uh, the rights holders, which are the, the people that have treaties with the Crown, the people that are, have their inherent rights and Aboriginal rights to the territories. And what's going on is they're picking people that purport in our, in our area there are people that have self-identified themselves as indigenous people. Uh, and uh, because of the, again, the Indian Act that was mentioned here earlier. Uh, this Indian Act has a whole number of different categories in it and uh, 
Right now, it's just a dog's breakfast of who is an indigenous person, you know, that, that these people are consulting. So when they, you, you hear Canada go around the world, talk about they're championing the rights of uh, indigenous peoples around the world, there's lots going on in our backyard in Canada, and I know here in the States as well, where uh, you know, rights are being overridden. And uh, this, is, uh, this is not, uh, uh, they talk about the good words, they use words about like uh, uh, reconciliation. You know, is how there are this whole new relationship with First Nations people. In the Prime Minister's words, there's no one more important to the government of Canada than the Indigenous peoples. And then turns around and allows uh, travesties to happen across our country. You know, such as this activity, the Kinder Morgan pipeline uh, uh, that's going through uh, some of our neighbours out in the West. You know, uh, where does reconcilia reconciliation begin? You know, I, I've been saying they need reconciliation action, put some action to their words, and take the uh, nuclear waste management industry uh, and, over, and put some, provide some uh, proper oversight, not allowing the industry to police themselves. So I think there's lots going on that uh, Canada who likes to come, you know, to the UN or goes around the world saying that they're, uh, they're doing great things. There's a lot of work yet to get done in our country. Earlier this morning, uh, Ole Hendrickson, um, uh, again, I'm honored also to um, have been invited to um, accompany the First Nations at this gathering here at the United Nations. Um, this morning in Ottawa, there was a press conference at 11 o'clock where um, First Nations and non-government organizations uh, joined together uh, to um, talk about these very issues and uh, they made uh, an appeal to another United Nations organization which is the International Atomic Energy Agency to say that these proposals to abandon wastes, abandon uh, old reactors next to the Ottawa and Winnipeg River to abandon uh, to create a, a large mound of waste at the Chalk River Laboratories that these proposals are not consistent with the guidance that has been developed by the International Atomic Energy Agency. Canada is a member state. Canada is a party to the Joint Convention on the Safety of, of uh, Nuclear Fuel Waste and Radioactive Waste. And Canada will be attending a meeting in, in next month where, uh, and in June, where um, signatories to that convention will discuss whether uh, radioactive waste is being properly looked after. And the letter that's been sent to the International Atomic Energy Agency asks for an investigation of Canada's radioactive waste management practices, an investigation of whether those are consistent with the guidance that's developed by the International Atomic Energy Agency, because this is a problem that's not unique to Canada. This waste, which will be hazardous from thousands, hundreds of thousands of years, is going to be a problem for people around the world. And Canada should be uh, a leader in finding the best ways to deal with it, the best ways to consult with First Nations, with Canadian people, to find ways that are acceptable and not, as people here have said, not just handed over to the corporations, to the nuclear industry, and, and let them find ways that are convenient and inexpensive. So that meeting, that conference in Ottawa this morning uh, had more of a focus on um, asking the International Atomic Energy Agency to do an investigation of, of how Canada is, is managing its waste and whether it's truly doing so in accordance with IAEI gu guidance. Say hello everyone.
I'm Chief Quinton Phillips from the Mohawk Council of Ganawage. Um, to my immediate right is Chief William Daibo from the Mohawk Council of Ganawage. And to my immediate left is uh, my Grand Chief Joseph Tokuiro Norton from Ganawage. Um, the entire panel is made up of people, of friends of mine, uh, people who I've worked with, people who I respect. Um, and it's our, our coming together is rather, um, I, I guess, f for all the wrong reasons. We've had no choice but to make alliances. We've had no choice but to form relationships because people are not listening. You know, I take my hat off to Chief April, um, April uh, Phillips, who just spoke from her heart several minutes ago. And I think everybody who was in here or who will hear her words will be touched, uh, to say the least. I don't understand why people just can't get the notion of what this world is coming to. We have polar caps that are melting at an alarming rate and people don't seem to care or people don't seem to acknowledge. World powers who say global warming is a myth. People who think that are fools. What generation will have to draw the line in the sand and say enough is enough before it's too late? And that too late time is not that far away. Science is saying that. Animal lives are saying that. Creatures who should not be living where they're living are saying that. Man and greed, money, are not saying that. So I guess, you know, from different arguments and battles and fights that I had to fight with, uh, along with, say, Chief Troy, Thompson from the Mohawk Council of Wakwizasne to my far left um, battling the city of Montreal, the island of Montreal, when they dumped millions of liters of raw sewage into the St. Lawrence Seaway system, um, you know, to Grand Council Chief Patrick Madabi several years ago when we had to fight Bruce Power and their attempt to send spent nuclear generators through this, the Great Lakes to the St. through the St. Lawrence Seaway system up to Sweden for decommissioning. You know, our, our, our language back then was, if Sweden has the technology, then why the hell doesn't Canada? If you're going to play that game, you better, you better play by rules. Technology exists, then technology should exist in Canada and in the United States. There should not be the threat to society, to the environment of transporting any of this garbage from point A to point B to point C. It does not make sense. And in a world where we have, just to get into this building, go through security, go through x-ray machines, get pat-downs, check your luggage, your bags, you can't bring this, you can't bring that, you can't walk on an airplane today without going through the same type of scrutiny. What is that telling you about what kind of world we live in today? That terrorism is a part of life. We sit here today in New York City, the probably, in my opinion, the biggest and the best city in the entire world, and it was not too too long ago, was not too many years ago, New York was full of tears and fear. No one has forgotten that. You know, our people have built the skyline of the city. The Mohawk men have built New York City and every major city in North America because of our, our ability to to, to withstand heights. It's just something that the Creator gave us. Our other natural ability is to take care of our environment, to take care of what we give thanks for. Chief April Phillips said, we do that every single day. It's part of what we do as Mohawk people, as First Nations people. We give thanks to Creator at the beginning of every new day for everything we are blessed with. It's a very easy concept. You don't have to be of indigenous or First Nations blood to do that. Just do it in your mind. And maybe at that point, you'll start seeing things in a different light. You can't take for granted every single day. You have to be thankful and you have to look out for what the best interest of your we say five generations. 
we need to look out for our grandkids, our great grandkids. And that line in the sand starts now. <clears throat> Whichever governments are listening, please. Canadian Nuclear Safety Commissions, I don't, I'm not sure of what they're called in the United States, but worldwide, I'm sure they have them. Many times these types of organizations are nothing but rubber stamping committees who rarely, if ever, deny. That needs to change. Safety of the world should be paramount. And it's a sad day to say that I don't believe it is. It's all about greed. So with that, I'll end it. And I'll thank you all for coming. <clears throat> so I go, my name's uh, Chief Troy Thompson. I'm from the Akwazasna Mohawk Nation. Um, I come to you as an uncle, a great uncle. Uh, I'm a godfather. I'm a future father. Um, I'm a fellow human being uh, on Mother Earth. And I'm greatly concerned about the future of um, this Earth that we live on. Um, sadly, um, today there are many threats to, to Mother Earth, um, including radioactive waste. It affects us all. You know, we come from all different corners of, of the Earth. We have different beliefs, uh, different, um, different uh, lives, um, different interests, but Mother Earth is, you know, the common denominator. Um, so more than ever, uh, we need to do, more than ever, we need to work together to pr protect and preserve Mother Earth. Um, we need to do this not just for us, but for our children and their children and their children and all the generations to follow. Um, more than ever, we need to, we need to um, make Canada more responsible and respectful towards towards Mother Earth. Um, you know, I'm I'm, I'm just very um, very excited to be here. Um, I lived here for 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 six years. I I love this city a lot. Um, you know, New York City is also threatened by all the stuff that that can happen if if we do not start working together. Yesterday to you know pr preserve and protect this, uh, you know, this great planet that we live on. Um, when I was a young boy, I remember uh, elders talking about how there will be a war for water one of these days. And, um, you know, these past couple of years have, have not been more evident of that. You know, it's a, a prophecy that came true. Um, I visited uh, Standing Rock and, and supported them fight the great fight there. Um, as my colleague Chief uh, Clinton Phillips stated before, um, I sat by his side um, and, and you know did battle versus the city of Montreal for the for the the, tr the tragic um, incident that was that that had happened there many years ago. Um, I mean, it's just. We, the reality is we need to do something um, soon. We need to work together. Um, we, you know, th there's a lot of great, there's a lot of great ideas out there and um, we, we could accomplish great things if, if we come together, unite. Um, we need to do it. Um, that's all. Thank you. Sometimes a story is, is worth uh, a thousand words. Um, I just want to tell you briefly that uh, this was referred to by Chief Phillips, Chief Clinton Phillips. Um, Bruce Power in Canada wanted to ship 1,600 tons of radioactive steel across the ocean, through the Great Lakes, through the St. Lawrence River, across the ocean to Sweden, so that it could be taken apart in Sweden, and some of that contaminated metal could be blended with normal non-contaminated metal to such an extent that it would be marketed without any labeling. In other words, these radioactive materials, these radioactive wastes are being disseminated in the marketplace. 
And when you do that, it's irreversible. You can't go back again. And uh, this is why it's urgent. Now, uh, in Canada, we managed to get, and in the United States, we managed to get a large movement uh, opposing this idea. In, in Quebec, for example, where I come from, there were 400 municipalities that passed resolutions against this transport plan. But the people who really made the difference were the First Nations. And the Mohawks really told Bruce Power, there's no way that these steam generators are going to go through our territory. And they had really the confidence and the determination to stop those shipments cold. And that's what we have to learn to do. We have to learn to really stand up for this because you can't, diddle da you can't dilly dally. The age of nuclear waste is upon us. And this, we, we have large, um, huge amounts of radioactive waste which the industry wants to abandon. And one way of abandoning it is to recycle it into commercial products. So it affects every single human being on the planet, ultimately. And this is not a parochial issue. It may be we're talking about Chalk River, which affects, you think, maybe a few communities along that. We may be talking about the transport of highly radioactive liquid waste through the Mohawk communities, which is unconscionable because it's completely unnecessary. The bottom line is that these things are being done not for safety's sake, but for the convenience of the nuclear industry who wants to expand their operations. The brakes have got to be put on, and they cannot be put on by the industry. They have to be put on by us, the people, through our elected representatives who are asleep at the switch. So if I, <clears throat> if I may, just one final thing from me. It's, um, it's interesting to note that um, we have a name for, for New York. It's called Nuna, which means amongst the, amongst the hickory. Because apparently this is where tremendous amounts of hickory wood that we use for all kinds of different things grew. And uh, with the, all the different things that are happening, pollution, maybe we'll have to change the name in the future because it no longer exists. <clears throat> yeah, just um, I'm 29, so I should be around for, what, 60 years. And I want to say that, like, you know, we can do better. What is the solutions? Focus on the solutions. You know, it uh, makes my heart pound thinking about this. And to look at my leaders now and say, how did we let it get this bad? How can we do better now? You know, if we look at our brothers and sisters that protect the land, we need more of all of nations to be out there defending the land, getting arrested. That's what we need. We need to be brave. We need to warrior up. You know, the time is now to like, to stop being so afraid of, you know, these colonial structures that are oppressing us because that's what's happening, you know, and, and to challenge the white supremacy because that's what's controlling all of this, you know, and we have no say, you know, and, and if you say you're allies, it's time to step up and do some real ally shit and get arrested, you know, we got to go to jail. Like, we all got to do this because... Everyone might laugh, but these are my children. You know, they're 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 gonna be suffering, and it's. I don't want to. I think about that because we're not there right now. Well, imagine what they're gonna be going through, suffering with no water. You know, we gotta we gotta do better now. We can do it, but it's just like we have to be brave. We have to be out there. You know, when when things going down like Standing Rock. They say, like, if we, if we do any action, you know, protesting towards this nuclear waste, you know, we can get really hurt because they have, like, nuclear SWAT team. And it's just, like, it's too bad. Like, we have to put our bodies on the line. We have to. We can't be afraid of, like, you know, what we think they can do to us. But w what can we do, you know? And it, it's my responsibility as, like, you know, 
one of those people that might be alive in 70 years to say that, like, you know, I could look back and say, we did something about it. What did we do? You know, and to say, like, to look at the leadership now and say, where is the integrity here? Like, we are human beings, you know, and there's, there's nothing. It's just like we're being treated, like, less than, you know, anything. And it's just so disrespectful the way we're constantly being treated, you know. So I want to make sure to make it known that, like, Canada and USA, like, they're not countries. This is Turtle Island. This was wrongfully stolen, you know. And if thing, if leadership were in Indigenous hands, like, you know, things wouldn't be this bad. We wouldn't be fighting for our lives for fresh water. Like, this is just disgusting that we have to do this but it's necessary and like our people like we have to lead with that bravery and our heart shaking you know is because it's because we know what what's at stake here and I don't know why people don't understand you know why the rest of the nations can't like get it but it, it, it it's our reality and um you know I'm how how do we how do we say that like it, it's ultimately us killing ourselves because of our energy consumption and you know we all have to take that responsibility and look at how we're living our lives how we're consuming what you know why are we just allowing this government to cre you know and all these industries to create this nuclear waste you know why are we allowing this why aren't we why aren't we starting the revolution and shutting them down? Why aren't we doing that? Why are we just so subtle, you know? And so this is just the beginning of what's going to be happening. But I say, like, you know, to call upon all the warriors. The time is now to rise, you know. Warriors stand together and to, you know, challenge these things. And that's all nations. That's everyone here on Turtle Island. We need everyone to work together, you know, everyone in the world to be looking at how are we disrespecting Mother Earth, you know, and to correct those wrongs. That's the only way we're going to survive, is to have that integrity and to think about Mother Earth, every single decision we make. That's the only reason, that's the only way we are. Miigwech. I just want to uh, conclude by saying, you know, our women and our young people are, are, are definitely going to be uh, our warriors in this future battle. This is a long, process and they're stepping up to the plate along with the men in our communities are stepping up to the plate to say that we can't allow this to continue to happen of burying this waste in our territories or transporting through our territories so when uh, they're stepping up to the plate you know the verdict on the governments is that they're dropping the ball on this they're guilty 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 Yeah, I I think that the uh, Mr. Saro Piagbara from the Ogoni people in Nigeria. Um, the issue being discussed here is very interesting, uh, particularly for those of us who are coming from uh, what is considered to be the third world. Um, there is, uh, uh, let's talk for Nigeria, there is a whole renewed interest in uh, nuclear power for for uh, so-called power generation because we live in a country where we have less than 7,000 megawatts nationally for power production and now the government is moving towards uh, contemplating on the idea of uh, um, nuclear energy. Now with your own uh, vast experience uh, relating to the active working for nuclear power and all this, um, is there any way we can build a coalition to carry the message beyond your own borders because I am quite interested in the whole discussion about us fighting together but how do we fight together if those of us who are already involved in this whole situation already understand the message, already understand the dangers around it 
are not broadening the frontiers of the discussion uh, beyond maybe Canada, U.S., and maybe in this hallowed house of the United Nations. How do you carry this sort of message to other communities in other parts of the world who may not have had the direct experiment because of the deceit by the state and, uh, and the businesses? All they point to them is the, the, the good life you will get from nuclear energy, the good life you will get from this, and nobody's telling you about the dangers that this whole thing posed to their lives in, in the immediate or in the long term. So how do we get the message back beyond this hall to other people so that they share in the experience and join in the struggle? Thank you. Th thank you very much for your question. Yes, this is a very important question. Uh, we have to learn to work together across continents, really, because in North America, right now, nuclear power is on the decline. You could say the age of nuclear power is really virtually over in North America and also in Western Europe, because why? Because we have experienced the, these dreadful problems and we've seen how they just don't go away and the cost just keeps multiplying and the problems don't get solved. So uh, my email address, you can contact me, is ccnr at web.ca, ccnr at web.ca. And I can put you in touch with other Africans who are working with uh, the same question. And also, I think it's useful for African people, Nigerian people, and others to know that we have cases, for example, in Austria, they built a nuclear reactor. They finished building it. It was all ready to go, and they never started it up because the people uh, chose not to. In America, there was a Duke Electric, which finished a nuclear reactor. Again, they completed building it. They were ready to start it up, and they chose not to do it. And when the president of Duke Power was asked why, he said, if I start this reactor up, it's going to bankrupt us because it's going to produce problems which are far more expensive than any benefit we will get from it. These kind of stories are good to tell Nigerian people so that they realize that the economics even is not good. It's only good for the people who put the money in their pocket. They put the money in their pocket and they go away and they're very happy. But the people who are left with the problem are very, very unhappy, and especially the grandchildren who don't get any benefits and who get nothing but the problems. So please get in touch. If I may, I just wanted to um, touch on something. It took about 30 years, and I hope it doesn't take this long for this particular issue uh, to be, um, at least to be put on the, you know, in the front of everybody so it can be dealt with. But the United Nations Declaration on Indigenous Populations took about 30 years of constant, 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 um, um, you know, continuing to pursue, and it took a long time for all the countries to uh, to jump on board to uh, to do, to help in the in establishing it and to embrace it and uh, make it bring it to where it's at right now at this point in time. Now it's a question of enforceability or having it, uh, having it take its rightful place in all the countries that have, uh, that have, um, um, that have endorsed the, uh, the declaration itself. So there's, there's always hope for something. And this is something that um, I would like to see in my lifetime. Uh, the abandonment of all nuclear energy, the creation of it, so on and so forth, using the resources to develop it, all the mining industry, the things that are taken out of the ground, such as uranium, to be used. So it's a, it's a dream in a sense, but I think it's, uh, it's real. We can do this. Thank you very much. I think we're finished for the for this uh, side event. Thank you.